Hey everybody, I am back. So if you watched my video the other day, you saw I did a video about uh, lithium polymers <clears throat> and all the people out there that say that they're dangerous, their grenades ready to blow up, and they have fires. And I shared that I had over five to 6,000 charges uh, of lipos. So to st statistically, that's not correct. Okay, if, if I could have five or 6,000 charges without ever having a fire, I'm doing something right and the battery's safe. One thing I made a mistake on, I kind of picked that five to 6,000 out of the top of my head. In most of my batteries, I write down with a permanent marker, a number, and I kind of have a log book that I know how often I'm checking the internal resistance and how often I'm charging it. So when I really went through all my notes, I have about 14,600 charges since 2006. Now, if you don't know me, I'm obsessed with giant scale airplanes. Up until 2005, I flew giant scale gas engine airplanes, which were like half scale, like my pits I had. But then I built a giant 197 inch vintage airplane for gas. But when I ran the engine, it shook it so bad, I thought it was going to fall apart. Put it in storage for a year. And then a buddy of mine said, uh, hey, Damon, those little electrics you started flying, they make electric motors big enough up to like eight or nine horsepower that would fly that airplane. And at that point, I was infected. I mean, it was like, um, I, I can't say that joke because it's raunchy. But um, I, I am infected with model airplanes that are electric powered. I own no gas engine airplanes now. Everything I have is electric. So in since 2006, when I started with my little foamies, all the way up until today, I have about 14,600 charges. So let's dive into why I have that success, okay? So I had created a thing called the rule of six a couple of years at a fly-in. And if you don't know of Ceph, Ceph is a big electric fly-in down in America's Georgia every year. And about 400 pilots would show up. We wouldn't have a single LiPo fire from charging that entire five or six days. I mean, if somebody flew their little wing with a screaming little motor in it uh, into the ground at 120 mile an hour and had a LiPo fire, well, yeah, that's, that's common sense. But we didn't have any charging fires. Um, but the rule of six is don't charge it any more than 1C. Um, so what 1C means is if this is a 52 milliamp battery and you uh, can set it at 5.2 amps. So 5,200 milliamps equates to 5.2 amps charge rate, which is 1C. High C batteries, like this battery here says I can actually charge at 3C. So this battery is recommended to charge at 3C. I don't do it. Oh, by the way, this Potenza battery is the most kick-ass battery I've owned. I also absolutely love the Thunder Power. These two batteries are kick-ass, but this battery is a year and a half old now. I've had 65 flight charges on it, and it's still showing threes and fours for the internal resistance. And I'm gonna get into that to the minute, but this is one of the best batteries I've ever flown, and I've flown it all, people. So, charge it no more than one C, Balance charge every time. I'm going to get into later where people do it differently, but that's the way I do it. Leave it at storage until you're going to fly, which is 3.8 volts. In my earlier video, I said the word hibernate. To me, hibernate put, means putting into storage. Um, make sure the cells are balanced for every flight. So when you pull your battery off the charger, plug in one of these doohickeys and see that all your batteries are really, really close to being the same balanced level. 4.2. 4.19, 4.18, 4.2, that's fine. If you got a 4.2 and a 3.9, you got a bad cell. Okay, that battery should not be charged. It shouldn't be flown. Um, check the internal resistance once a week and let the battery cool down when you're done. Okay, let the battery cool down. And it can be kind of lukewarm. It can't be hot. And it doesn't have to be ice cold. At least for me, I've never let them get that cold. Or I never let them get cold that if I touch a tabletop and touch the battery, it's the same temperature. They're always just a little warm. Okay, now, here's one of the most important things for your success in battery maintenance is know your freaking charger. When you buy one of these things, I love my iCharger here. I've had it uh, 10 or 11 years. It's absolutely rock solid. Um, I would almost guarantee you 99% of the people that have problems with iChargers accidentally did something wrong, okay? There's a lot of crap in these things. You can accidentally have the wrong chemistry picked. You could have life instead of lipo. Um, lithium, I mean, there's so many chart, chain, uh, um, 
things you can select in these, you've got to be really careful. So number one, know your manual. Know every function. Know how to find your, your battery chemistry. Because you might want to charge some lifes on this and then you forget, you throw a lipo on it, you might have a problem. Um, and, know, and know how to visually check every time you go to hit charge that you're on the right settings. Chemistry and if you're balanced charging, okay? So, now, what happens when we charge and what does that mean toward the life of our batteries and the safety of our batteries? Um, if possible, always charge before you fly. So you've got your batteries at 3.8, go to the field, charge them up and fly. If you can't charge at the field, charge in the morning before you go to the field. Don't charge them a week before, okay? And when I talk about internal resistance in a minute, you're gonna understand why I'm telling you all of this, okay? Um, a standard charge, just so you know, most people don't understand. Do I have a five cell here? No, okay, let's pretend this is a five cell. So this is a five cell battery, pretend, it's really four. A five cell battery when it's fully charged with 4.2 per cell is 21 volts. So when you do a standard charge, the charger is bringing this battery, the entire battery up to 21 volts. It's not looking at the cells. It's only looking at the battery's capacity. Why that could be problematic is if you've got a bad cell in there that doesn't want to come up to 4.2, this thing's going to keep pumping 21 volts into it until it sees 21 volts, which means you might have some of your regular cells at 4.3 or 4.4 volts while this dead cell is getting really hot and you'll start smelling it. Okay. Um, I had a battery one time have a cell go bad and that's exactly what happened. I could smell it. I felt the battery. It was really hot. Um, and I wasn't checking the internal resistance back then in the days. Um, if I would have checked the internal resistance, I would have known that that battery was taken to dump. And I also would have known uh, that that cell was going bad. I have seen batteries when they go bad, the, and this will make sense in a minute, internal resistance has numbers. Twos and threes and fours are great numbers. I had a battery one time where the internal resistance was two, two, 19, two, two. Well, that 19 was a cell that was going bad. Plus, it would never get to 4.2 volts. So when you do a standard charge or sometimes what's called a fast charge, it's only looking at the capacity of the battery. When you do a balanced charge, it's looking at each individual battery coming up to 4.2 volts. And as it gets close to, to, once the first two or three cells get to 4.2, it stops charging those. And it keeps trickle charging the other ones all the way up until it's at 4.2. The pros of fast and standard charging is it's faster. Balanced charging takes about 30 to 40% longer depending on if your ba batteries are, are out of balance. Okay, if they're getting older, they might get out of balance in every flight. Um, then you have discharge in your battery and then you have your storage charge. Um, I don't ever use, the only two settings I use on my, my charger is balanced charge and uh, the um, um, storage, okay? Um, and I want to tell you now a little story about storage. I was on RC groups a year ago, or no, it was four or five years ago. And nobody, I got to be honest, most people don't know who I am unless you're one of my YouTube followers or on my Facebook. Okay, I don't do contests. I'm rarely in a magazine. I don't need any of that. I don't compete because that's not who I am. I don't need to be in the magazines unless I'm teaching somebody something. I, I just want to be the nerd with the electric airplane. That's all I want. So not a lot of people know who I am. So I was in RC groups uh, looking at some electric things and I made a statement and everybody told me I was a fool and stupid and they were just bloviating fools and I didn't give a shit. I'm mean, crap. Pardon me for my language. And uh, <clears throat> one of the guys, and I'm not going to use his real name, um, but let's just call him Jack. Well, Jack says, you know, you can take two batteries and store them for the winter, leave this at 4.2 and this at 3.8, and you're not going to know a difference. It's a myth. As good as these batteries are, they won't be affected. So if you followed me on YouTube and my Facebook for many years, you know I blow stuff up. I test it to destruction. I love to break stuff, and I love to experiment to know at what point things fail. So when they said that, I thought, well, that sounds like a challenge. So for the next winter, I took four of my Thunder Power batteries for my small biplane. There were little, like, 2,200 uh, milliamp four cells, I think. 
Two of them I left at 4.2 volts, all I mean at full charge all winter. The other ones I left at 3.8. Next spring I went to fly it. Didn't notice a difference at all. Vertical lines were great. Seemed like the amperage was great. And I thought, oh God, is this really a myth? So I flew for two weeks. And then a week later I was flying and I thought, you know, I should check the internal resistance because I normally will check the internal resistance like every, well nowadays I check it every 10 flights. <clears throat> the two batteries that were at 3.8 volts were still on the three to fours. The two batteries that I left at full charge all winter were at 11 and 12s. That's horrible people. I mean, that's getting to the point that the battery is getting iffy. If it's above 20, I'd usually get, well, it depends. If it's a little park flyer, I'll let those internal resistance get so high. As long as the cells are balanced when I charge it, I'll let them get so high I don't get a four minute flight and then I throw them away. Um, but basically why, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain real quick what internal resistance is for you. And I'll try to do it in a Fisher Price sense. Imagine this is a vessel of water. And when it's full, that is a full 21 volts or 4.2 volts per cell. You've got a one inch hose that runs over your motor. Let's call your motor the sucker. And that motor is going to suck as hard as it can through this hose to drain this liquid. So this liquid is actually the amperage. So as it sucks and it's pulling the amperage through it, your motor gets full power. When your internal resistance goes up, your hose goes down to the size of a straw. So this is sucking as hard as it can, but it's not pulling it out of the battery as fast as it can. So you don't get the amperage you need. Now, what's really misleading is you put a meter on this battery, you see it's at 21 volts, you see it's at 4.2 volts per cell, and you think, man, my battery's great. It bothers me that we don't talk more about internal resistance in model aircraft. Um, so now let's talk about internal resistance for a minute. Um, there's a couple of rule of thumbs, okay? And I don't want to be all nerdy on you, but if you have a 52 milliamp pack, you can divide it by 12,000. Some guy came up with this and it's pretty accurate. If you divide 12,000 by 52 milliamps, you end up with like 2.3 is the number. And basically, um, that's a good battery. Um, if you've got a 2,500 milliamp pack, you know, do the numbers, you'll see what, where the number is. Those are good sweet spots for it to be. But if we're going to talk about what is realistic to fly on, um, if you're between one and seven, that is a kick-ass battery. Okay, it's kick-ass. Um, it is like Hollywood. Okay, you just won the Emmys. Or you're a rapper with the big chain around your neck and the big white clock. That's how cool you are if you're between one and seven. If you're between seven and 12, that's a battery you want to start watching and thinking about. If you're above 12, that battery's not going to have long flights. Um, if the cells are balanced, you can keep flying it, but monitor and watch that battery. Okay. So um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about disposal. And this is kind of kick ass. I've been in pissing matches about this too. And I'm not sure if I can rig this up to make it work for you all that you can see it, but I'm going to try to. So um, let me slide my computer back out of the way. So, most people, when they go to storage a battery, to destroy a battery, they go into this, the uh, discharge mode and, and set the discharge as low as it will go on your charger. Most chargers will only go down to 3.8 volts, so you can't ruin the battery. Some of them will go lower. If yours doesn't, discharge it down to 3.8 volts. A method I don't use, but I've tested and it worked, is take a uh, five-gallon drum from Home Depot, fill it full of water, throw in a couple of inches of water softener salt, stir it around till it's dissolved, throw your batteries in there, and it will gurgle and it will bubble, and you'll see this weird foam that comes to the top that looks almost like some kind of diarrhea. Um, but it will discharge. I've seen some people say, well, no, it rusts off the tabs and it won't discharge it. All of mine were discharged in three days. You want to know why? Because I took them all and ran them through my bandsaw to cut them in half because I wanted to see what lipos look like on the inside. <clears throat> so I didn't get a single spark. I didn't get anything. Um, they were dead. They were drained. Um, but that's not how I do it. The way I do it is 40 watt light bulb. Now the bases are aluminum, so you can't solder wire to it. So I use gaffer's tape to hold it on. The middle is copper, so I soldered this to it. You want to make sure these two don't touch because that's a dead short. And when you plug your battery in, man, is it going to discharge. So what you do is you plug in like this 
And if you look really, really close, you see just a little bit of a glow. But if you're gonna do a batch of discharging, put your batteries in series, plug them in, and now you're seeing a little bit of a glow. If you put like 10 or 12 batteries together, this thing's as bright, it's a 120 volt bulb. So if you put 120 volts to it, it gets pretty freaking bright. But that's how I discharge my batteries is this bulb. Now, anytime I discharge a battery, I take the battery out and put it in my fire pit. Get it out of the house, put it in my fire pit, let it sit for a day or two, go out there, put my meter on it, I know it's dead. Um, but those are the ways I discharge. And get, oh, and you can drop your batteries off at like Home Depot or Lowe's or those places. They have LiPo places you can get rid of it. Um, I had a chemist send me an uh, email and said, uh, all they're doing is throwing it into their trash, which is going to the dump. So you might as well throw yours in the trash. I don't know if that's true. So I, I would dispose of them at like Home Depot or someplace. But that's it for this video. I'm sorry it went so long. There was a lot to talk about here. Hopefully I didn't put you all to sleep. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe because I do a video a week at least. Um, if you're watching this on my Facebook, you know the story. I'm posting two or three times a week on my Facebook. And um, that's pretty much every, pretty much it, everybody. Uh, next video I'm making is uh, transitioning from small RC electric aircraft to large um, electric RC aircraft. Um, and then the video after that is why when you crash, it's not your radio's fault. Okay. I have so many people look at the radio like, my radio quit working. And uh, it's possible your radio quit working, but it wasn't the loss of signal that did it. It's something inside the airplane, loose, a wire, a short, battery was low voltage. Um, 2.4 gigahertz is, or yeah, it, it is so, um, it is so robust that it's, it's rare that you would ever truly have a signal loss. So rock on everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time I do one of these. Be safe and fly. Forget all the other noise in the world. Spend time with your family. Fly airplanes. <clears throat> rock on guys. Bye.